In this video, we'll talk about not just how problems are solved, but also the importance of understanding the maths behind the problems. Something we always encourage on this channel is to go deeply into the maths to know what's going on behind the rules that everyone applies. Are you ready? Let's discover the maths. To begin with, consider the sum of the first n natural numbers for any value of n. Say I ask you what's the sum of the first three natural numbers. Of course it involves just figuring out what is 1 plus 2 plus 3. Well, 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6. Easy. In the same way, if I ask you to calculate what's the sum of the first five natural numbers, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, then you do 1 plus 2 is 3, plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. So we understand perfectly what has to be done, and there's a straightforward way of doing it. What if I now ask you what's the sum of the first 1,000 natural numbers? Although you again understand the problem, you also know that it's going to take a very long time to add every number from 1 to 1,000 in succession. But what if I tell you that the sum of the first n natural numbers is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2? The German mathematician Carl Gauss found this method as a child, and you can obtain it from the formula for the sum of the terms of an arithmetic progression, and you can prove it by induction. To obtain the sum of the first 1,000 natural numbers, we put n equal to 1,000 and obtain our result by calculating 1,000 times 1,000 plus 1 divided by 2. 1,000 over 2 is 500 times by 1,000 plus 1, or 1,001, gives 500,500. It's a very useful formula. It's also a good example of what often happens in maths. You have a concept with a definition, you have examples, and then you have an operative characterization of the concept, how to do what's just been defined. As we emphasize on this channel over and over again, knowing how to do something is important, but equally important is knowing what you're doing and why a particular method works. If you do something without understanding the reason you're doing it, it's as if you don't know anything. Let's look at another example to do with combinations. Specifically, finding the number of subsets of m elements contained within a set of n elements, where both m and n are natural numbers, and n is greater than or equal to m. We represent this symbolically as n over m, within parentheses. Think about the simple case where we have a set of three elements, say A, B, C, and we want to know how many subsets of this have two elements. Because we're talking about combinations, not permutations, the order doesn't matter. The possible combinations are A, B, B, C, and A, C. So there are three subsets of two elements in a set of three elements, or 3 over 2 is 3. In the case of 3 over 0, this means the number of subsets of 0 elements in a set of 3 elements. Because there's only one empty set, the number of subsets is 1. So 3 over 0 is 1. How about if I asked you to calculate 6 over 4? In other words, how many subsets of 4 elements can be made from a set of 6 elements? You might be able to figure it out, but it's a bit of a pain. It suddenly gets a lot easier when you know that n over m is n factorial divided by m factorial times n minus m factorial. For 6 over 4, we have n equals 6 and m equals 4, so that's 6 factorial divided by 4 factorial times 6 minus 
4 factorial, which is 2 factorial. 6 factorial is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6 times 5 times 4 factorial. And this is over 4 factorial times 2 factorial, which is 2 times 1, or 2. The 4 factorial on the top cancels with the 4 factorial on the bottom, leaving 6 times 5, or 30, over 2, which is 15. And we've arrived at the result quite easily. The formula above works fine, but if we just apply it mechanically over and over again, without thinking, we may forget what we're actually doing, the concept involved, and at that point we effectively lose touch with the mathematics. It's also useful to know that the combinatorial numbers are the same as the numbers found in Pascal's triangle, which is also known as Tartaglia's triangle. This follows from a simple property of combinatorial numbers, namely that n over m is n minus 1 over m minus 1 plus n minus 1 over m. To make the triangle, we first write 1, then go down 1, 1, then go down a row and write 1 again, then 1 plus 1, which is 2, then another 1. Continuing with the next row, 1, then 1 plus 2, or 3, 2 plus 1, 3, and 1. Next row, 1, 1 plus 3, 4, 3 plus 3, 6, 3 plus 1, 4, and 1. Next row, 1, 1 plus 4, 5, 4 plus 6, 10, 6 plus 4, 10, 4 plus 1, 5, and 1. Next row, 1. 1 plus 5, 6, 5 plus 10, 15, 10 plus 10, 20, 10 plus 5, 15, 5 plus 1, 6, and 1, and so on. In terms of combinations, the first row represents 0 over, the next 1 over, the next 2 over, the next 3 over, 4 over, and 5 over. The next row represents 6 over, and moving along it, we have 6 over 0, 6 over 1, 6 over 2, 6 over 3, and 6 over 4, which is 15, as we already knew. Pascal's or Tartaglia's triangle is another operational way of obtaining combinatorial numbers. It can be used when you need to know an entire row of such numbers for example when calculating a power of a sum or subtraction, or a binomial coefficient. It's a useful method, but again, remember, never lose sight of the math that's behind the method or concept. I hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you again in the next video.